really cool process that you can use to save your original gas tank in your car. Gas tanks, unfortunately, are subject to a lot of rust. When you pull up to a gas station and you fill your tank, you're not just putting fuel in your gas tank, you're also putting in water, water that has seeped in from the ground, and then there's also water that the fuel absorbs from the air, that leads to rust, and that leads to holes in your gas tank and having to replace it. So we're gonna show you how to use POR15 gas tank sealer to fix an old gas tank so you can get your car back on the road. So first thing you need to do is pull it out of the vehicle, that's obviously done, and rinse it out with water. We have already washed this a couple of times with warm water and soap. Put a hose in it, let it get foamy, and just let it flow out, drain it, do it again. We've done that a couple of times already. Now we're ready to actually do the POR15 process. First thing we need to do is take off anything that's extra on the tank. So you need to remove the cap, any fittings, and the fuel sender and pickup. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the cap. We're gonna take a little hammer and tap the sender out. Okay, take that ring off. And then we're gonna carefully pry on this sender just a little bit to pop it loose. Be careful not to bend the fuel level rod. If you bend this, it's never gonna read correctly. You see all this white stuff on this piece of metal and then there's more buildup on the bar? This isn't terrible, I have seen a lot worse, but all of those little white specks on here, that's all corrosion caused by ethanol fuel. So this one is still workable, but there's some of that inside the tank and it's pretty rusty and crusty in a few spots. So first thing we need to do is clean this. We're going to take one quart of cleaner degreaser, mix this with a quart of warm water and pour that into the tank. Before that, we need to tape off all of the holes. We'll leave this hole open and I'm actually just gonna put the cap back on it. We're gonna tape this one off and tape this one off. You can use duct tape or painter's tape this stuff will eat adhesive, so you need to keep that in mind. I happen to have an old rubber grommet. I'm gonna toss that in there and see if I can get this to seat. There we go, that does it. So then we have a bunch of old nuts and bolts. So we're just gonna start dropping these in here. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this stuff up. I have a jug of warm water here. I don't have a big enough vessel in the shop to hold this that's clean, so I'm gonna pour this directly into the tank. Now, I'm going to take this warm water and I'm gonna pour a quart of that into this. Now we're gonna pour our warm water in. This is exactly one quart, it's the exact same amount as the cleaner degreaser. Okay, so we've got our nuts and bolts in here, we've got our cleaner degreaser in here. Now we need to mix this up for 30 minutes minimum. So you need to shake it on all corners, roll it, and it needs to sit and shake for 30 minutes. You're probably not gonna shake this thing for 30 minutes straight. Now that I'm completely worn out, that's heavier than I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna let this sit on its side. We'll shake it again. Sit it like this. We'll come back, we'll shake it again. Roll it over, shake it. We'll do that a few times. For a minimum of 30 minutes, this needs to sit inside the tank. So we'll come back every couple minutes, give it a shake. Okay, so our tank is ready to drain. I've got a tub here that we're gonna dump it all into. We're gonna go ahead and clean this twice. So we're gonna get all of the nuts and bolts out of here and then we're gonna do it again with this second quart. The hardest part of this particular process is getting all of the 
nuts and bolts out. We're gonna use a magnet and a flashlight, see if we can find them all. All right, so now I'm gonna take this and this will get disposed of. All right, so we have drained the tank and we've gotten all the nuts and bolts out. Before we move on to the metal prep stage, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this tank one more time. So that'll be two total cleanings with the cleaner degreaser. You may be thinking, but Jefferson, you've already done it once. What's the big deal? Well, I'm gonna tell you what the big deal is. If this metal is not ultra, ultra clean, the tank sealer isn't gonna stick as well. I have done a similar tank seal in the past, probably 15 years ago. It was just a tank sealer. That's all it came with. There was no cleaner degreaser. There was no metal prep. It was a different brand altogether. And it didn't say anything about the prep work. So we just took it, put it in, and followed the rest of the instructions for the sealer. But there was no prep, there was no cleaning. And what ended up happening was the sealer ran, so there were a lot of runs on the inside of the tank. And every one of those peeled off the tank, went through the sender and into our fuel pump and ruined a, a brand new high dollar fuel pump. It was a dumb mistake that I made years and years ago. So I'm here to tell you, do not mess around with the cleaning portion of this process. It needs to be as clean as humanly possible. That's why we are sticking to the rules of POR 15. That's cleaner degreaser mixed with warm water. We're gonna do that twice. We did the nuts and bolts once, and then we're gonna do just cleaner degreaser to get everything else cleaned up, make sure everything's perfect. Then we'll rinse it, move on to the next step. Now we need to dry this. There's no airflow inside here, so it's gonna take a long time for this to dry. You may be thinking, let's use my air compressor. Well, that's not a great idea because your air compressor is gonna spit out little bits of oil. You may not even feel it spraying it on your hand, but if you do that in here, you're absolutely going to get oil and debris contamination in here on your fresh, clean surface. The best way to dry one of these out quickly is to use a heat gun or a hair dryer. We've got our heat gun. It won't fit in there. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn this on its side. I'm gonna rig this up. And I'm gonna use a little piece of uh, exhaust tubing that we've got in the back just to kind of couple this together. We're just gonna let it sit. It'll blow hot air in and that'll come out here. That'll get us the flow we need to dry this thing up quickly. Oh, that is nice and dry. That's perfect. There's not a hint of moisture in there. Now that our tank has cooled off a little bit, the next step is metal prep. So this is a basic step. You just open it up and we're gonna pour the entire content of this into the tank. So now we're gonna go ahead and put this cap back on. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna shake this. The main thing about this is that you want to roll the tank and get it all coated. Now obviously this is gonna be a little cumbersome when you have a really big tank. You wanna make sure that every interior surface of your tank is covered for at least 30 minutes. So that means that if you got a big tank, you'll have to sit it like this for 30 minutes, roll it, let it sit like this for 30 minutes, roll it like this, wash it around, let it sit for 30 minutes, here, here, and here. So you're gonna have at least six different positions at least. This tank being as small as it is, one quart is gonna, does a pretty good job. This whole bottom is covered, this whole side is covered. So this will still take about two and a half hours to properly prep this tank. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for 30 minutes on each side, come back, drain it. Needs to get rinsed one more time and dried. Then we can do the sealer. All right, so our tank is fully dried and now we're going to mix up our tank sealer. This is a small tank. It's three or four gallons roughly. The kit that we have here is for a full size automotive gas tank that covers 25 gallons and down. The POR15 motorcycle tank sealer kit is eight ounces of this exact same stuff. So first thing we're gonna do is pop the lid and we wanna do this quickly because once this is 
exposed to air and moisture, it starts to cure. First thing we're gonna do is stir this up with a paint stick. Never shake POR15 products. All of their products are required to be mixed with a stick. Oh, look at there. So we wanna get all that mixed up really well. All right, so now I'm gonna pour it into this cup. All right, so we're gonna stir this up again. Go ahead and clean our paint stick off. Previously, we'd been using the cap. We don't wanna use that for this process because there's a spring and some other stuff. We don't wanna get this gunked up with this because it will make this not work as well. So we're gonna use tape once we get this poured in. So now all we do is just pour this directly in. This time, I'm gonna go ahead and use the duct tape for a better seal. I'm gonna go crisscross here and then across the other side. Make sure that I push it around the edge so that the edges get sealed. Now then, we start rolling. We're just gonna roll it like this. Remember, there's baffles inside this tank, so we wanna pour it slowly. Now all six sides have been coated. We can continue to roll it a few more times if you want. Uh, I think that's what we're gonna do, but if you're done, you go ahead and open it up, drain off the excess, and dispose of it. Do not put it back in the original can if you had any leftover that you wanted to use for anything else. It will activate all of it. To make sure that everything is coated, once all that's done, we will let this sit for four days four days, 96 hours at least, before we put it back together and put fuel in it. And that's all there is to sealing your fuel tank. Make sure you go check out POR15 for their tank sealer kits and all their other rust preventative and top coats. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.